Hello everyone, welcome to this week's vlog from me, Max McGillivray from Red Fox. This week we are in, as the boat says, Padstow. It's now our destiny to be in Padstow. Amazing place to, to be. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about it uh, because of um, Rick Stein and his involvement. Uh, firstly, big commiserations to the Shropshire family. Uh, Guy Shropshire uh, has uh, just passed on, aged 93. What an amazing individual. He was one of the stalwarts of the, of the sector. In effect, basically set up the fresh produce sector from, from the get-go. Uh, there's a, we'll show a bit of an article that the Fresh Produce Journal have rung on him. And his memorial service is going to be, I believe it's going to be in the middle of December at uh, Ely Cathedral. And that's going to be a, a packed, packed house for sure. Anyway, let's come back to uh, Padstow. So Padstow, back in the day, was a Dan at Heel uh, fishing village. And then this individual, Rick Stein, came along. Rick was local to the um, area. And he used to have, um, bizarrely, a nightclub here. Lost the license for it, but they still did some food. And so he started to get uh, into, into food. So age 19, for an individual who uh, flunked his A-levels, his father, unfortunately, um, committed suicide, um, he was all over the place, and then he found his passion in food, and his passion in food direct to the consumer, not via a retailer. And now you have this um, amazing situation of, the, of this uh, town of Padstow that um, he has, I've got to get this right, he has the fish and chip shop, uh, the cookery school, uh, the seafood bar, the restaurant, uh, the cook shop. Did I mention the cook shop? Um, another restaurant and also a pastry shop. So for a chap who didn't have anything at the beginning to then set up this model all around food and go direct to the consumer, uh, wow. Um, and ye yesterday we went on a lovely boot, crow, boot crows, boat cruise um, up the River Camel on the uh, Jubilee Queen. And speaking to the um, owner of that, uh, that boat, he was saying how it's fascinating uh, with Padstow, that they think it's great, everything that Rick Stein has done. Uh, Cornwall itself has become so foody, so foody central, um, that in Padstow, there's this oddity during the summer that uh, it's rammed during the day, then three, four o'clock, it all, all goes quiet. And why is that? Because everyone's going home to get changed, ready for tea, um, in all the um, posh uh, eateries uh, here in the, the, the surrounding areas. So that got me um, thinking about this issue that we've always been talking about, about um, yeah, you can have uh, huge volumes of turnover going into the retailers, but aren't there niche markets that uh, we, you, could all exploit? So the likes of Cornwall and all the eateries here, can we start not going into, into, into these? But you've got to remember, these are very niche areas, and uh, when we've been here, we've seen the, the likes of the total produce wagons running around, so they're all very well served. And although these are very good, potentially niche areas, You've always got to remember, uh, what's an example? Do, do, who remembers Congelo Organic Produce? Carol, Rupert, come on, let's, let's take, take a blast from the past. I, mem I remember um, working with them, and this must be 15 odd years ago, and they got so excited because they won an order with Harrods to supply them with organic, organic apples. So it was like the, the new coming, that, oh, well, great, we're associated with, uh, with Harrods. But uh, when they got into the thick of it, it turned out it was um, half a pallet of organic apples a month. Um, and I just fear with the, with the likes of um, Cornwall, though there's um, a big explosion in, in food, it's only a certain profile of, uh, of people that are going to be um, eating here. Um, and the, the rest of the 68 million people in the UK are still going to be getting the fresh produce from the conventional sources. And then we've still got the same issue about margin, margin pressure. OK, the other bit I want to highlight is uh, we've got Brexit looming and there's a lot of growers now concerned um, because of the seasonal labour issue. And there's a groundswell of opinion that the lobbyists, the trade associations, the government, the ministers, they don't want to talk about this in any great detail about immigration because it's not a vote winner, let's, let's be honest. Um, one of um, the most innovative um, fresh produce companies uh, in the UK, AC Gotham, Carol Ford, have actually took it upon themselves to set up a seasonal workers summit. Um, so this might be a little bit late, late in the day to get this message out, but Carol and her team are very keen if you are a large-scale grower, a large-scale employer of labour, to attend um, Carol's Grower-Led Seasonal Workers Summit. Um, it's uh, occurring on Wednesday the 7th of November um, at their offices uh, down in Kent. Um, I'll put all the links on here. Um, it is for growers, um, as I state. They're not overly keen for trade organisations or lobbyists or uh, consultants to attend. It's just for growers to have a roundtable, Chatham House-type, conversation so that there's going to be some meaningful dialogue will come out of it so that all of you growers have got perhaps a, a stronger voice together 
um, because you want to talk about the subject that a number of people don't want to talk about. So good on Carol uh, for getting that, uh, that set up. Details uh, below as, uh, as stated. Okay, before we go, um, best thing about, uh, about pads though, uh, probably the fresh produce that, uh, that, that we've seen. Let, let's see if we can do this. <laughs> My very enthousi enthusiastic camera person. Right, you have a good week and uh, hopefully might see you at the, um, at the Growers uh, Workers Summit uh, with Carol. Many thanks.